I don't care what anybody says, this is the most haunted road in California, and the fact that nobody talks about it makes it a million times more sus. Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Mason, and today my head looks a lot bigger than it did in the last video. Today, we're going to be talking about one of the most haunted and untalked about roads in California. So, San Felipe Road. It is about a three and a half to four mile long stretch of road once you get out of the residential neighborhood and all the way to the dead end. Down this road, you can find some really creepy cryptids, a lot of ghosts, maybe some cults, and the urban legend that supposedly started it all. Also, I should probably add that this road is located in San Jose, California. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about some statistics about this road. Then I'm gonna be talking about what people see down this road, the urban legend, and then my personal experiences. I think it's really important to talk about that when you go down this road in the daytime, it is absolutely freaking beautiful. I mean, the hills, the trees, it's honestly just a great road to go down to like think, listen to music, but at nighttime, everything, literally everything about this road changes. Equally as horrifying, there is no service down this road and you're going down a four mile long stretch of road. So if you decide to go at night and your car breaks down or you run out of gas, you're screwed. Once you reach the dead end, that is where you can find a couple of different government signs. Another thing that I'll never forget is while I was in college, <laughs> for the three months I was in college, I had a business professor who basically confirmed that yes, there was some weird government testing going on and supposedly caused one of the earthquakes in that area from a couple years ago. Now, when I was in college, that was back in 2018, so a couple of years ago from 2018. Now, as to what people have claimed to have seen down this road, it's been a lot. People have talked about weird cryptids like this wolf man-like creature. There's been some sightings of these weird like demonic hogs with red eyes. The urban legend of the white truck, which I will get into in just a little bit, trying to essentially chase you off this road, which mind you, this is a very, very narrow road. And probably the scariest just for the fact that like, it's more real and tangible than just a ghost, is the fact that I've known a couple of people back in high school who, when going down this road, were basically stopped because there was a line of people in black robes slowly walking towards their car. So that obviously leads to a lot of different open doors as to, is it a cult? Is it some satanic warship? Or maybe it's just a bunch of stupid teenagers just trying to scare people even more. Now let's get into the urban legend that supposedly started it all. This story takes place in the late 1800s slash early 1900s. It basically goes that there was once this woman who worked at a preschool, and the preschool was supposedly past the dead end of this road. And one day when she came home from work, she caught her husband cheating on her. She immediately freaked out and killed the husband, and nobody really knows what happened to the other woman. It was then said that for the rest of the day, she was so distraught, trying to piece together everything that happened in terms of her husband cheating and what she had just done. The next day, she took the white truck to work, which was her husband's white truck. And once she got to the preschool, she was still so upset that she decided that she was going to burn down the preschool with herself and all of the kids inside. Now, supposedly, anytime that anybody goes down that road at night, if you stop in front of the gate where the dead end is, turn off the lights in your car, and even turn off the ignition, a white truck will appear on the other side of the gate flash its lights at you, and drive through the gate almost as if it's a ghost truck, and will chase you, doubling the speed limit trying to run you off this road. Which, like I stated before, this road is very narrow. On one side of the road, there is basically like a mountain or a hill, and on the other side of the road, there is like a steep little ravine where there's lots of trees. Growing up, I lived literally just off of San Felipe Road, and me being obsessed with paranormal stuff, urban legends, haunted roads and places, obviously I would go there all the time. I can probably probably say I've been not was that just me? Hold up, I'm gonna have to go back and like edit. I think I just saw something like fly by the screen. Hopefully it was just my imagination. Yeah, no, it wasn't. Replay the clip. So I was gonna say that's just spit, but that came from my eyebrow. Continue. Now, I can honestly say I've probably been down that road at least a hundred times. And the first couple of times that I went down that road, it wasn't so much that I saw anything creepy, but I definitely felt a very weird feeling. I definitely got chills. I felt a weird sensation. My chest would get heavy. I felt that it was difficult to breathe. I felt like my throat would be closing up a little bit. It basically almost felt like I was going to have an anxiety attack. Then obviously, the more I went down, the more I realized that I didn't see anything down that road the first... 20 times, I just assumed that the urban legend was fake, everything that everybody was talking about was fake and wasn't real and didn't exist. And then I got way too comfortable with that road and that's where everything started to make a huge 
turn. One of the first investigations that I tried to do down that road, I was about 16 years old and I decided that it was a good idea to play with the Ouija board, literally just on the side of the road. I believe in one of those experiences, it just said the word hog and then went immediately to goodbye. That same night, I took another person down that road because I still wanted to go and explore down that road a little bit more, but we didn't play with the Ouija board. As we were going down that road that same night, the person who was driving immediately slammed on the brakes as I was looking at my phone. I look up and I see that there is a hog in the middle of the road, which I have never seen there before or even in the area. It had these glowing red eyes, huge tusks, and this black and bloody fur slash coat. It was at that exact same moment that I got a text from my friend on the way out, since there's no service down that road, that their electricity had gone out at the exact same time that me and the other person saw the hog down that road. Maybe coincidence, maybe creepy, I don't know. That's just something that I can't really explain. Since then, I've experienced so much more weird stuff down that road, like my music changing by itself or turning off by itself, which cannot be explained by, oh, you just lost service or Wi-Fi because I was on like my Apple Music that I had already pre-saved to my phone or had bought. I have seen the wolf-like weird half man, half wolf creature climbing up on the side of the hills down that road. I have seen the ghost truck. It has chased me once at night and I caught it on film in the daytime, which was very weird, which I will also be inserting a video of that in just a little bit. In this video, we did not see the truck coming as it was approaching us. It wasn't until later when we looked back at the film that there was a truck there. So I had to mute the video because there is other music playing and I didn't want to get copyright claimed, but right here you can clearly see the truck drive by. Plus my friend was only recording because I had my foot out the window and he thought it was funny and he did the same. So in this picture, you can clearly see the front of the truck and the lights. And this is obviously the side of the truck where you can see the door handle and the headrest. Now let's zoom in and you can see that there is clearly nobody there. Also, as you can tell by the zoomed in screenshots, there was literally nobody in the driver's seat at all. I've also seen a very weird, hazy, dreamlike ambulance styled like it was from the 1950s driving down that road one time, heading straight towards the dead end as if there would be anybody even there. Another friend that I took down that road as we were approaching the road, he heard kids' voices telling us to turn around and turn back now. And what makes that even creepier is I didn't even tell him this story or the urban legend, nor had he ever heard it before. So if he was just making that up just to scare me, he got really lucky. And that was quite the coincidence. And probably one of the weirdest and creepiest unexplainable things down this road that I've seen was the time that I was driving there probably at like two in the morning and at the dead end of this road, there was a very old crippled lady just walking towards the gate. First of all, why would any old lady just be walking at three in the morning down some supposed haunted road? Like I said at the very beginning of the video, this is almost a four mile long road with no houses down there. Where was she going? Where was she headed? And where the hell did she come from? Also, for those of you wondering and who want to go down this road, it can be a little bit confusing because San Felipe is also a main road in San Jose that goes through a lot. Basically, if you're going like Southwest down this road, as if you're going to go to like Evergreen Community College, you're gonna past McDonald's and the college on your left side. And on your right side, there's gonna be a road. I believe it's also a freeway exit called Yerba Buena. Just keep going straight down San Felipe Road. If you see the McDonald's on your left side and Yerba Buena Road on your right side. Okay, that was a lot. Also, I've been constantly getting requests for haunted places or urban legends in the Bay Area in California, which honestly I think is really cool because that's where I grew up and that's where I'm from. So if you'd like me to, I can do a whole compilation video on everything that is unknown and kind of known there, if you guys would like. And also I'd like to make a quick note. My ultimate goal is to post Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Obviously last Friday I did not post because I was kind of going through a lot and I'm still kind of figuring a lot of stuff out with my health and mental health and physical health. But if I cannot make that, my goal is to do at at least two videos a week. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video because I really enjoyed making this video. I honestly really enjoy talking about urban legends specifically from the Bay Area because it's so easy for me to go into depth with them. Just because like I immerse myself in these stories and legends and places and roads for the whole 18 years that I lived there. Thank you so much for watching this video guys. I really do appreciate it. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy this video. And of course, if you want more creepy content, don't forget to click the subscribe button down below and the bell icon to get notification every single time that I post a new video. Video. I'll see you guys on the flip side. Stay spooked.